I know it's difficult to stay awake after having such a good lunch and heavy lunch. So um, thank you for doing that exercise. Uh, I hope everybody is now well awake and active. Uh, if not, I'll try my best to make this session interactive and um, believe me, this is not going to be a one-way communication because generative AI, I'm sure everybody has heard about it by now. I mean, thanks to OpenAI and ChatGPT for making it a household name in less than two, two months. And uh, by the way, uh, how many of you know that the first revolution in industry, in IT industry, took around 10 years, which was the cloud revolution, to reach at its peak. Do you know how much time ChatGPT took to reach 100 million users? Anybody? Any guesses? Four days? No, I think not that fast. <laughs> Three weeks, you're close. So OpenAI officially posted on the website that they reached 100 million users in less than two months. So you can see how technology is playing a crucial role in all of our lives and how fast it is bringing that revolution. That means what is famous and crucial today, technology is making it outdated the day after. So we all have to be catching up, utilizing the technology for making our lives better. But at the same time, it comes with a cost. And I'm sure everybody will agree with me that since morning, we have been talking about trust, compliance, regulations, data preservation, and whatnot. And, and on top of it, we are, on the other hand, talking about how technology or AI um, can disrupt the businesses, right? Kind of conflicting, isn't it? So let's look at in the, in the industry and in the world of IT, how things have moved over the period of time. And this is not something which I have spent time on analyzing. We have Gartner's, Gartner's and IDCs of the world helping us doing that market research and telling us where the technology is taking the world to, right? And, and that's where it guides our decisions, business investments, and at the same time tells us how this technology is going to make the businesses easier, cost effective, productivity. I'm sure not everyone, but most of you might be hearing these kind of discussions in and out in your day-to-day um, -day business meetings and hearing from your leaders that look at where the technology is going and how you're going to leverage that to make your business simpler, faster, improving the productivity or, you know, doing the maximum with the uh, minimum set of resources so that this technology comes in handy and gives you more benefit, gives you more margin, right? That's where you are getting the, becoming more profitable. So I just wanted to bring a quick understanding around that how generative AI has, you know, slipped into your life without even letting you know that you have started using it um, for, you know, uh, making your life easier. And I'll just take a quick example over there. If you, and this is a little technical t uh, stuff which I'll not go uh, reading into it, but I would like to tell you and bring your attention to that this all started from a 
very, very famous research by Google and the paper, it was a simple white paper um, named Attention is All You Need. And if, if um, some of you might not have read, please, I would suggest that go and read this. Very interesting topic tells you about that how you can make use of data to bring in the attention of the, the, uh, the entire correlation of vectors and uh, you know the parameters which correlates each other and certain times while you arrive some of the insights and decisions you will be surprised to understand that there are certain hidden parameters and outliers which plays a cr crucial role in defining the entire decision, which you might not have been paying attention to. So that's where it's a surprising fact and talk that that's where the attention all you need is a paper which talks about and that's where all of the discussion around transformers started. Now let, let me take a step back. How many of you have explored chat GPT so far? Raise your hands. Wow, almost, I can say 80, 80, 85 percent of the people in the, in the room. Tell me one thing, how did you found chat GPT? What was your first impression? I would really, I mean, can we have mics please? Um, I would really like to understand your experience and what was your first impression about when you used ChatGPT? And why I'm taking a name of ChatGPT here? Because most of the people are familiar with ChatGPT, whereas ChatGPT is just a tool. The technology behind it is generative AI. Generative AI is nothing but a subset of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the mother. Generative AI is a Gen Z kid. And why it is the talk of the town, I'll come to that. But before, I would like to hear from you. Thanks. So um, when we trained ChatGPT on our organization data mm -hmm. and started using it, so okay. we found that Google was one wherein you were getting links and all, and you still have to go and go to the links, learn what you want to do. But mm. ChatGPT was giving me instant answers, and not only that, you building a context and it keep on going. With that, right? So now we have a friend in our office wherein you can go and ask that friend anything, mm -hmm. and you'll get some definitive answers. So we fed our policies there so that people want to have, you know, can I take this leave by this method or all. So all those sta questions started getting answered. Mm -hmm. So that way it has become very useful for us, but we implemented many use cases, so okay. I'm not going to detail you. But, but you found it useful, right? That, that's the bottom line? Extremely. You found it extremely useful. Okay. More, more answers. I would really like to under, uh, get that diverse experience. What was your experience? How you felt while you, while you were using the chat GPT? Anybody? Yeah, I would like to share my personal experience, not from the organization point of view. Like uh, when we use it, we find it's making our life very, very comfortable. It's mm -hmm. able to, uh, it's pr primarily a large language model, nothing more than that. It just, uh, it's able to collate and, uh, you know, give you the context in the right manner. But at the mm -hmm. same time, um, it makes your life comfortable, but uh, it comes with a good f uh, sense of uh, fear as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it will have its own biases. It all depends how it has been trained. Right. Uh, uh, if it is trained in a particular manner which suits somebody's interest, some nation's interest, it can be a uh, major challenge even to the humankind. It, uh, to, to me as an individual and as a parent, I feel it will kill the creativity for my children. Pay and the, the attention what he is saying. It'll it creates a unique kind of challenges as well. At the same time, I would like you to look at the trajectory. Initially, it all started 2014 the technology was taking shape, right? It, was, it never became successful. But then, as we reached to the chat GPT of the world, one, it, it made life simpler. I'll, I'll, it I'll, was very easy to like use. I would like to add on yeah. a pointer to that also. 
Uh, if I give you clue to what, what's happening in Russian Ukraine war and how the weapons are becoming autonomous, somewhere down the line it is LLMs are playing. Exactly. Your man from the loop, the, the machines, the, the weapons are totally autonomous. It is uh, kind to see uh, large language models and uh, it's, uh, uh, you may call it ethical use and ethical use that is individual perspective but that's kind of damage can do. Thank you so much. And you, you yourself tell that story. It's, see, uh, initially when the application of generative AI, which is nothing but the, the generative adversarial transformers originated from the subset of artificial intelligence, which, which tells, and I'll try to make it very, very simple for you, generative AI, the concept and the technology, it feeds into the large set of data. It works on, on human reinforced learning feedback exactly the way you teach any small child. If there is a kid like one year, two year, five year, he, he or she goes through a learning process exactly in a similar manner. These models learn themselves from, feeds themselves on the large set of data. Then after a period of time, they start generating insights from the intelligence which they have got from that data, exactly the way human mind works, right? All good. And that's where people started to talk about that, you know, generative AI models are breakthroughs, bringing revolutions that you no longer need to learn anything and remember anything because chat GPT is at the tip of the finger. You just click on it you get the answer. You want any information regarding history, politics, and whatnot, it actually gave a sense of that it's an additional brain which is attached to you. You no longer need to take a pain to remember everything, right? And that's how kids were perceiving it. That's how initially all of the people were talking about, and that's where this entire rat race started. And I, why I'm calling it a rat race, you can see it by yourself. Major, major global IT players jumped into it, invested millions and billions of dollars in the research of generative AI because ChatGPT set that ben benchmark. Reaching 100 million users in two months, best marketing strategy ever. They did not have to do anything. Over the night, they became the heroes. Open AI. And it got acquired by Microsoft afterwards. But then, what started happening? And, and by the way, ChatGPT is not the only model in the, I mean, just for the benefit of, of everybody's knowledge, there have been a lot of large language models in the market which companies have been using. So there's a competition also available and people started to see that which model will do better with maximum number of data and that's where they started to acquire data. They started to take whether it's a right or a wrong mean. It became a ra race to cover up and build those models at any cost and, and pay, pay that attention why. Because then, after some time, people started realizing that, hey guys, and, and as you said, what's your good name, please? Amitabh. As Amitabh said that, you know, initially it looked the bright star in the pocket, but gradually I started to realize that, no, it's not. It's, it's a big danger, it's a big challenge, uh, going, and a big risk in going in future, which can overcome a lot of things. It is giving me, it, it's acting as a magic wand for me, but at the same time, it is also raising some of the risks and challenges, like how do I make sure that the data on which my model is being feeded is coming from the authentic so source? On the internet, not everything is authentically placed. The data is not uh, coming from the ethnic sources many a times. I need to ensure that I am transparent in building those solutions without, you know, 
eroding the trust of my competitors secondly you know is it the right skill sets am i going to invariably obsolete the workforce skills by introducing generative ai technology it is majorly used the generative ai applications if you look at is majorly into content modernization content generation content summarization which is mostly come handy into while you're having the conversations and creating a next level experience for the end user right that's the major area now generative ai also helps in documentation like there is a lot of documentation in contract uh, contract negotiations building the documentation for the development cycle and what not but are you realizing that while this data is being fed it to the large language models and they start to apply their own intelligence they are actually raising major issues there and at certain point in time while uh, look at the kid the teenagers who have started using this technology they are asking questions and at, after a certain period of time chat gpt starts hallucinating right these are the challenges there now when it starts hallucinating it may be providing inaccurate information which your teachers and professors have gathered over the period of time that knowledge children are thinking we do no longer need the teachers we have chat gpt right the but nobody is validating if that model is hallucinating and providing wrong information it's a big big risk which you are feeding into the next generation and nobody is validating it right so there is a need to regulate to govern what kind of generative ai applications are getting built into the market and the masses are accessing it right third time the issues of the biases which i am not going to reiterate you have been hearing that since morning biases trust compliance all of that accumulates ultimately into that there is a serious need of the governance to be put down around this madness so somewhere that there has to be a regulation while people are having a free access of large language models a technology on which your generative ai feeds into and then you're building the solutions like chat gpt right now i think we 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 talked a lot about that but then the risk and concerns are not just around your you know the data security and trust and compliance information leakage in advertently by your employees how many of you know there was a major security incident by one of the major companies where employee by accidentally uploaded their confidential policy documents to chat gpt and it will all it was all leaked to the public internet because yeah go ahead samsung yes you're correct and you know what they really had to pay a very heavy price for that because overnight they were bound to change their policy they were bound to make the corrections amendments to stop accessing all the documents by the way after this major incident many of the countries have brought in a law to ban accessing chat gpt in their in their organizations so 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 now is banning a tool or a technology is a solution tell me no right it will never solve that problem just simply banning it will not solve the problem so what is the what is the right solution to this problem to look at the you know it is not doing this information leakage for the generative ai and and i'll come to that talking about it copyright infringements today you have the 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 technical writers today you have the marketing content writers 
in the public why it is the talk of the town i'll come to that but before i would like to hear from you thanks so um, when we trained chat gpt on our organization data mm -hmm. and started using it so okay. we found that google was one where you were getting links and all and you still have to go and go to the links learn what you want to do but mm -hmm. chat gpt was giving you instant answers and not only that you building a context and it keep on going so now we have a friend in our office wherein you can go and ask that friend anything mm -hmm. and you'll get some definitive answers so we fed our policies there so that people want to have you know can i take this lead by this method or all so all those start questions started getting answered mm -hmm. so that way it has become very useful for us but we implemented many use cases so okay. i'm not going into detail in, you know, but but you found it useful right that that's the bottom line extremely. you found it extremely useful okay more more answers i would really like to under, uh, get that diverse experience what was your experience how you felt while you while you were using the chat gpt anybody yep yeah i would like to share my personal experience not from the organization point of view like uh, when we use it we find it's making our life very very comfortable Mm -hmm. able to uh, it's pr primarily a large language model nothing more than that it just uh, is able to collate and uh, you know give you the context in the right manner but at the mm -hmm. same time um, it makes your life comfortable but uh, it comes with a good f uh, sense of uh, fear as well mm -hmm. uh, it will have its own biases it all depends how it has been trained right uh, uh, if it is trained in a particular manner which suits somebody's interest some nation's interest it can be a uh, major challenge even to the human kind it uh, to pass to me as a individual and as a parent i feel it will kill the creativity for my children Pay and the kids the attention he is saying it, it creates a unique kind of challenges as well at the same time i would like you to look at the trajectory initially it all started 2014 the technology was taking shape right it was it never became successful but then as we reached to the chat gpt of the world one it it made life simpler I'll, I'll, it I'll, was very easy i would to like use. to add on yeah. uh, pointed to that also uh, if i give you clue to what what's happening russia ukraine war and how the weapons are becoming autonomous somewhere down the line it is llms are playing exactly your man from the loop the, the machines the, the weapons are totally autonomous it is uh, kind to see uh, large language models and uh, it's uh, you may call it ethical use and ethical use that is individual perspective but that's kind of damage can do thank you so much and you you yourself tell that story it's see uh initially when the application of generative ai which is nothing but the the generative adversarial transformers originated from the subset of artificial intelligence which which tells and i'll try to make it very very simple for you generative ai the concept and the technology it feeds into the large set of data it works on on human reinforced learning feedback exactly the way you teach any small child if there is a kid like one year two year five year he he or she goes through a learning process exactly in a similar manner these models learn themselves from feeds themselves on the large set of data then after a period of time they start generating insights from the intelligence which they have got from that data exactly the way human mind works right all good and that's where people started to talk about that you know generative ai models are breakthroughs bringing revolutions that you no longer need to learn anything and remember anything because chat gpt is at the tip of the finger you just click on it you get the answer you want any information regarding history politics and what not it actually gave a sense of that it's a additional brain which is attached to you you no longer need to take a pain to remember everything right and that's how kids were perceiving it that's how initially all of the people were talking about and that's where this 
entire rat race started. And I, why I'm calling it a rat race, you can see it by yourself. Major, major global IT players jumped into it, invested millions and billions of dollars in the research of generative AI because chat GPT set that ben benchmark. Reaching 100 million users in two months, best marketing strategy ever. They did not have to do anything. Over the night, they became the heroes. Open AI. And it got acquired by Microsoft afterwards. But then, what started happening? And, and by the way, ChatGPT is not the only model in the, I mean, just for the benefit of, of everybody's knowledge, there have been a lot of large language models in the market which companies have been using. So there's a competition also available and people started to see that which model will do better with maximum number of data and that's where they started to acquire data. They started to take whether it's a right or a wrong mean, it became a ra race to cover up and build those models at any cost. And, and pay, pay that attention, why? Because then, after some time, people started realizing that, hey guys, and, and as you said, what's your good name, please? Amitabh. As Amitabh said that, you know, initially it looked the bright star in the pocket, but gradually I started to realize that, no, it's not. It's, it's a big danger, it's a big challenge uh, going and a big risk in going in future, which can overcome a lot of things. It is giving me, it, it's acting as a magic wand for me, but at the same time, it is also raising some of the risks and challenges, like how do I make sure that the data on which my model has been feeded is coming from the authentic so source. On the internet, not everything is authentically placed. The data is not uh, coming from the authentic sources many a times. I need to ensure that I am transparent in building those solutions without, you know, eroding the trust of my competitors. Secondly, you know, is it the right skill sets, am I going to invariably obsolete the workforce skills by introducing generative AI technology? It is majorly, used, the generative AI applications, if you look at, is majorly into content modernization, content generation, content summarization, which is mostly come handy into while you're having the conversations and creating a next level experience for the end user, right? That's the major area. Now, generative AI also helps in documentation. Like, there is a lot of documentation in contract, uh, contract negotiations, building the documentation for the development cycle and whatnot. But are you realizing that while this data is being fed it to the large language models and they start to apply their own intelligence, they are actually raising major issues there. And at certain point in time, while uh, look at the kid, the teenagers who have started using this technology, they are asking questions and at, after a certain period of time, chat GPT starts hallucinating. Right? These are the challenges there. Now, when it starts hallucinating, it may be providing inaccurate information which your teachers and professors have gathered over the period of time that knowledge. Children are thinking we do no longer need the teachers. We have chat GPT. Right? They, but nobody is validating if that model is hallucinating and providing wrong information. It's a big, big risk which you are feeding into the next generation. And nobody is validating it, right? So there is a need to regulate, to govern what kind of generative AI applications are getting built into the market and the masses are accessing it, right? Third time, 
the issues of the biases, which I'm not going to reiterate, you have been hearing that since morning. Biases, trust, compliance, all of that accumulates ultimately into that there is a serious need of the governance to be put down around this madness. So somewhere that there has to be a regulation while people are having a free access of large language models, a technology on which your generative AI feeds into and then you're building the solutions like ChatGPT, right? Now, I think we, we, we talked a lot about that, but then the risk and concerns are not just around your, you know, the data security and trust and compliance, information leakage inadvertently by your employees. How many of you know there was a major security incident by one of the major companies where employee by accidentally uploaded their confidential policy documents to chat GPT and it, will all, it was all leaked to the public internet. Because, yeah, go ahead. Samson, yes, you're correct. And you know what? They really had to pay a very heavy price for that. Because overnight, they were bound to change their policy. They were bound to make the corrections, amendments to stop accessing all the documents. By the way, after this major incident, many of the countries have brought in a law to ban accessing chat GPT in their in their organizations. So, so, so now, is banning a tool or a technology is a solution? Tell me. No, right? It will never solve that problem. Just simply banning it will not solve the problem. So, what is the what is the right solution to this problem? To look at the you know, it is not doing this information leakage for the generative AI. And, and I'll come to that talking about it. Copyright infringements. Today you have the, the, the technical writers. Today you have the marketing content writers in the public. We then ask the information. You will start to see that 90% of the content has lost, lost its creativity, its originality. So somewhere, as a human race, we are losing our creativity, our unique talent, which AI or generative AI will never be able to re replace, at least not in near future. Please stick to that. Do not lose that to the technology. Go ahead. Yeah, you have a question. So, that's one question. What I'm saying is mm -hmm. Excellent question, and I'm coming to that, that how you're going to augment technology for improving your productivity and not to lose it completely to it. So there has to be a strike and balance, and that's where my entire uh, today's session is standing on. You need a proper governance around building such solutions where you are striking a right balance of how you're going to use these tools and technologies like generative AI to your advantage, improving the productivity, improving the experience of your businesses by automating the processes, but keeping that human loop in the process so that you're not losing everything beyond your control. And that's where the governance around the portion. And, and I think I've already talked about a lot of things here. Now, when I talk about the, how you put that governance around the generative AI, right? How would you take care of these areas? Now, that is something at, I would, I would be proud to talk about that. Um, Wipro has recently got an IP around the Wipro generative AI framework 
which we have partnered with Microsoft also, and it is on the marketplace, where we have built in a very, very strong, secure framework to guide you that while, while you are building the generative AI applications and you are putting it to the masses, what kind of guardrails, security aspects, compliance aspects, uh, because Europe is a, is a major market where GDPR is in force. How do you ensure that all of that is being built into one framework which can be easily utilized without worrying about the trust compliance data infringement and the security aspect of it? And, and that's where these are the areas which I would suggest that while you are looking out, and I'm not talking about it, you can see Wipro has got the paid in for detecting the VR sickness causing that content in VR motionless. So there has been technology which is talking about a AR and VR being blended and mindlessly developing that technology. No, I think somewhere you have to put a boundary around saying that, guys, you have to look at cautiously that this may harm humankind, right? responsibly, ethically, and we, we have been known for our ethical, responsible practices. And that's where today also in AI, and I would like in the interest of time, I would like to, you know, just talk about this one second. This one. So the framework not only uh, look at, and, and this is just a, just a direction for you to think through in terms of while you're putting the governance around these kind of areas, you have to think holistically in three areas. One, security. Definitely look at while you're enabling and training your large language models, are they having a right access control setup? That means there will be executives who require the financial information and while you're building that kind of a uh, chat GPT kind of a conversational AI to help your executives taking the decisions and you have feed it that financial data and built in something to help them improving the productivity, there has to be a layer of access control in place. You will be looking at while you are processing the PII data, right? There was somebody talking about the trust compliance uh, and the data privacy in uh, that manner. That is where this technology and governance can help us by, uh, by putting those access control to clear off and filter of the PII data and not letting it go out of in the public. Even then you, get, you can give the right set of information to the applications. The second part of it, what if, I mean, I myself tested ChatGPT in November because we were partnering with Microsoft at that time. We were the uh, official vendor to look at the beta releases. And when I asked a very simple question, give me the recipe to, to create a nuclear hydrogen bomb, it immediately spilled all the detailed steps of creating a hydrogen bomb. Do you think that uh, this kind of a technology should answer these kind of sensitive, very dangerous kind of questions which a teenage asks and gets those answers to build a hydrogen bomb? No, right? So that is where your guardrails are needed while you're building your applications around it. You have to keep in mind, yep, there's a question out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was saying enough to raise it to open AI saying that please stop these kind of answers and do something about it. So they took, uh, believe me, they took the action item, they fixed um, those, those areas saying that uh, if somebody ask about keywords like bomb, like threat, like, you know, um, those kind of negative keywords, if you, if you might have analyzed sentiment analytics. So these are certain kind of things which then they started training saying that, you know what, if somebody is asking you these kind of questions, look out for the keywords, don't answer. Say that I'm not supposed to answer these sensitive areas, especially in India, any questions related to religion, to caste, 
biasness. Please refrain answering those kind of questions because think about the, the replications when you're going to put down these kind of applications for business purpose. Banking, you're putting a conversational AI in banking in rural areas, in, in other areas where somebody is talking to conversational AI and they start getting nuances, right? So if you want to make your business successful, you want to really make best use of generative AI applications by building it, please bring in secure these kind of areas and domain, absolutely, I just talked about the desired specific you know, a domain like healthcare, like banking, like manufacturing, or if you are building some kind of a solution around entire supply chain where inventory or pricing dynamics are getting, uh, getting generated, look at the domain knowledge and the, and the kind of terms which are being used in the domains which will make your applications much more successful and acceptable by your business clients because that's where you are going to give the confirmation and become a trusted advisor for your end clients saying that I can build a robust conversational AI application for your bank, for example, USSA Bank or Access Bank or ISSA Bank because I have these things in place, I have already taken care in my framework while I'm going to build the solution for you. And that's what will help you in gaining the business because nobody would like to be a second Samson by getting into that trap. And, and you know what, the moment the customer experience and um, satisfaction goes on a toss, your business graph goes down very sharp. So with that thought, I will leave it all of you to take a step back, sit back and understand that though the technology brings in a lots and lots of um, easy way to scale and explore, but you have to be watching your steps where this is going to take the humankind. With that, Ashwara Gupta, I sign off. I'm open for any of the questions. Thank you, Aishwarya, for your uh, insights. And I would like to... Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you.